Welcome back, everybody. You know my first guest tonight from movies like Atonement and Brooklyn. She now stars in one of the best movies I've ever seen, Lady Bird. Darlene, can you excuse us? Darlene, stay. Why aren't you in Algebra 2? I switched sections. Why? Aren't Jenna and Kyle enough? <laughs> I'm sorry that you're jealous. <laughs> Jenna is a moron, you know. She's not. She's in AP Calculus. She's a moron in a deeper sense. You don't even know her. Miss Patty assigned you a role, by the way. You just never showed up to claim it. What role? The Tempest. There is no role of the Tempest. It is the titular role. No, it's a made-up thing, so we all can participate. You can't do anything unless you're the center of attention, can you? Yeah, well, you know your mom's they're fake, totally fake. She made one bad decision at 19. Two bad decisions. Please welcome Saoirse Ronan. together again. We are. I'm yeah, so by happy. popular demand. By popular demand. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, thanks so much for saying such lovely things about the film. I'm absolutely, I, this film was absolutely, we had Greta Gerwig on, but, uh, and I talked to her about this, but I'm absolutely devastated by this film. Yeah. It is funny, it is beautiful, it's heartbreaking, it's hopeful, uh, the, 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 and, and I, I think I could probably give away the entire plot, I'm not going to, but the entire plot of the movie, and it wouldn't affect people's experience, mm. because in some movies you're waiting for the explosion or the big event exactly. or something like that. It's not overly dramatic The at all. big event of this movie is every moment in the movie. Yeah. It's people's lives. Absolutely. Honestly told. Yeah, it's... I keep describing it as, as sort of like a photo album, and every moment that Greta has chosen to, like, show and spend time with is so considered and, and well thought out and mm. it's she's just she's done such a brilliant job like that's her first film it's her first film and you know it's it's amazing to to be a part of the whole that almost excitement. makes me angry that's her first I know film. <laughs> it's extraordinary the patience she has like you you think like a first time director might be a little nervous in rush moments yeah and also you know and understandably for first time directors as well for some of them, it, you know, they're finding their feet and they're figuring out, like, what kind of a filmmaker they want to be. Mm -hmm. And I think because Greta was so involved in Frances Han, Mistress America, and things like that, mm -hmm. like, she, she's found her style already, even before she, you know, took to directing, so. And also, this is, in, in some ways, her story. Yeah. You know, this is... This in is essence, very, it is. In essence, yeah. her story. Um, but not yours, okay? You're not from Sacramento, California. I'm not. You're really I'm not. I'm actually not. You're if not. you thought I was, you were wrong. Doesn't sound like a Northern California accent. No. Now, I don't want to necessarily go into, like, you know, the intricacies of your accent, because we talked about that last time. Yes. But an extraordinary, sort of America, you have an American neutral accent, like, perfectly, even when you sing in this movie. What did you do? Yeah. Because you do. You sing, you audition in this movie, <laughs> and that's really where the accent can come back. How yeah. did you... How did you get your hook? What, what, are there American phrases that you worked on that really get you to it? There's... It is, it is sort of a generic American accent in some ways, but actually, the Sacramento accent, I never realised before, and I don't know if you... you I've been pick to this. Sacramento. It's... I'm aware of how boring it is. <laughs> Sacramento's a beautiful place. It's very beautiful, um, but there's not a lot to do. But it's very pretty. Yes. We, we like it. Yes, we do. And Greta loves it. Yes. And that's the main thing. Um, but there's actually certain sounds that she would pick up on, like in the way I would with an Irish accent. Yeah. And she'd really like hone in on that. She's like, no, 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 you have to say it like this. And actually it became quite specific. And I find as well with Californian accents in general, because they're, you know, in the sun and it's super laid back and so there's like they don't my accent we probably talked about this the last time as well my accent is so sort of like Ooh, and it's out there and it's very melodic and sort of like like me whereas i feel like with the californian with the with an irish accent i've never had, an irish I've never accent had any girl like come up to me and say like no me. i don't do that no way but the Irish accent, you, you know, you sort of have that, there's an eagerness there's to a, it and a lovely... There's a bounce to yeah. it. Yeah, and I think with it. the Californian accent, it's a lot more laid back, so I actually found that quite difficult. Your, your scenes with Laurie Metcalf uh, as the mother and, and, and the daughter, um, 
Uh, they're perfect. They're perfect. And if she does not win Best Supporting Actress, I do not know what that award is I for. I know. Because not only is she fantastic, but she is actually supporting the emotional playing field that you're on. Yeah. I mean, it starts off with the two of you, like, sleeping in the same bed. Yeah. And, and then immediately in conflict. Yeah, and that's, and that's what you were saying, that, you know, moment to moment, every, every piece in this movie and every scene or every shot that we see or every interaction, it is just, like, inviting us into this world more and more. So, like, one of the very first scenes between Laurie and myself, we're in a car and we're listening to the grapes of wrath and we've gotten to the end of it and we're crying and then the next minute we're arguing and, you know, and it's... And, and the it, next minute it, you are throwing yourself out of the car while it's moving. Out of the moving. car, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, see, they don't get it yet because they haven't seen it, but it's actually a really good scene. Um, but, um, but, yeah, and so there's all these, like, wonderful kind of intricacies within the relationship. Well, so. I'm not the only one who likes it. Uh, uh, it dethroned Toy Story 2 Did as it? the best-reviewed movie ever on Rotten Tomatoes. There is, it's 100% Rotten Tomatoes after yeah. something like 200 reviews. I didn't know we beat reviews. Toy Story 2, though. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that, actually. Oh, they've had it coming. Like, I feel, I feel a bit guilty coming. about really? that. Yeah, I feel a bit guilty about it. We were actually just talking about that backstage, how Toy Story has stood the test of time. Yeah, sure. So hopefully Lady Bird will as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it will, uh, because, again, it's just about how people relate to each other. Yeah. Now, uh, Catholicism is a big part of this movie. Did we it talk is. about the last time you were here? About... No, I, I don't think we did, but... Are you raised Catholic? I was raised Catholic, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a much more sort of cultural thing sure. in Ireland than it is... I mean, there are obviously very religious Catholics as well, but, you know, I, I went to a Catholic school and made my first communion, confirmation and all that sort of stuff. And in, this, just... in this movie, you eat unconsecrated communion wafers I know. as a snack. There's no way you'd be led away with that in Ireland. There's no way. But until it's consecrated, it's just a piece of bread. Yeah, but still, like... It's against the rules. No, well, it's definitely against God, the rules. God will be looking down at you, judging you, Stephen. If you did that. It makes that, me sound that like accent very put religious a chill now. down my back yeah. just now. <laughs> You're like a character I in a James like Joyce a novel. there or something, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the, the, the title, I don't think I'm giving anything away here when I say that. The title comes from... The character's name is, is Christine? Christine, yeah. Christine, but she doesn't want to be called Christine because that's the name her parents gave her. Yeah. She wants to be Lady Bird. Lady Bird. Okay. Saoirse, <laughs> Saoirse is a... Is a um, uh, if you're not from Ireland, it's a bit of a confusing name for the it rest is. of it. It is, and we've talked about that before. We have, yes. Yeah. Did you ever go by another name? Did you give yourself an, a, a nickname of your own? Like, change your name in any way? I never gave myself another name. I was... When I was younger, like, nobody was called Saoirse. I had never met another Saoirse. Um, and so... When I was a kid, I didn't want to be, you know, too different. So I thought, like, well, maybe I'll ask people to call me Sarah or Hannah or something, you know, nice mm -hmm. and simple like that. Um, but that never happened. And then later on, I remember a few years ago, I was in an airport and I was being picked up by someone and they have your, you know, the name on the boards and stuff. And I was scanning through and I was like, I can't find my name anywhere. It's always misspelled. Like, they never get it right. So I was looking for this, like, massive typo, like, typo Ronan. And I looked through and then I, like, scanned again and I saw a board that just said Shelley Ronan. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> Shelly, Shelly it is. So maybe I should be Shelly, I don't know. Why do you think, why do you think a movie about a 17-year-old a pink-haired girl in a Catholic school in Sacramento is resonating with so many people? What, why do you think that... Be I mean, it, I'm not a 17-year-old girl from a Catholic school in I Sacramento. Oh. Um, sometimes I wish I was. Mm. Um, <laughs> why, why, why do you think this, is so, this movie is coming off as so... Um, uh, Gripping, even though, again, no quality kills. Because I think they're not the things that define her in the same way that you can sort of categorize any human. And you're watching this person figure themselves out. Um, and, I mean, I don't even think of it... it it's, not, it it's not a teenage comedy. I, I don't even necessarily want to call it coming of age. You're watching a human being just almost like try these different characters on to figure out which one fits. And that's something we've all done and continue to do. And it's been an incredible, a very sort of like life-affirming 
experience to like know that you connect to it just as much as a 15 year old girl who's gone to say it or a guy who like went to NYU 10 years ago and he came from a small town too like everyone's been a because it's human you know it's it's genderless in a way and um and I love that about the film so well, so do I thank you Thanks. so much for being here Thanks. Lady Bird is in theaters now Shelly Ronan, everybody. We'll be right back with Van Jones. Wow, what a cliffhanger. What's going to happen in the next Late Show video? Click subscribe to find out.